Russia is an extremely diverse country, with a total area of over 17 million square kilometers or over 6.6 .6 million square miles that is home to over 190 ethnic groups, or as we refer to them here, nationalities. Each of them has its own language and culture. Also, according to the Federal Division of the Russian Federation, some peoples have their own so-called republics. These are the federal subjects of Russia with some additional rights, such as their own constitution or language. Generally speaking, they are countries within a country. Today I'm gonna tell you about some regional languages that belong to the Turkic language family. Without further ado, let's get started. Tatar is the mother tongue of the second largest ethnic group in Russia. It is spoken by over 5.2 million people, most of whom reside in the Republic of Tatarstan. Other areas include neighboring regions such as Ulyanovsk, Samara, Kirov and Orenburg oblasts. Also some areas in Siberia and in southern Kazakhstan. Tatar belongs to the Kipchak branch of the Turkic language family. It has a variety of dialects such as the Central or the Kazan dialect. Kazan is the capital city of Tatarstan and is a great city to visit, my personal experience. There is also the Mishar dialect and the Siberian dialect, which is quite distinct from the language spoken in Kazan. It is an agglutinative language with six grammatical cases and a complex verb inflection system. Like all the other Turkic languages, it can be easily understood by speakers of another language of the family, aside from a notable exception which we're also gonna cover in this video. Tatar uses Cyrillic, Latin, and Arabic alphabets for writing, however, only the Cyrillic script is considered official in the Republic of Tatarstan. The Arabic script is considered outdated by the European Tatars, however, it is still used by Tatars living in mainland China. The reason for the official usage of the Cyrillic script are the requirements and limitations imposed by the Constitution of the Russian Federation. It prohibits usage of any graphical system other than the Cyrillic script for minority languages. There was a massive public campaign in the early 2000s aimed at transitioning to the Latin script, however, it was never allowed. Bashkir is another language of the Kipchak branch, making it clearly similar to Tatar. In fact, this is the Turkic language most closely related to Tatar. So much so that the speakers of one of these languages can easily learn another by spending some time with its speakers. The languages and the people they're spoken by are so similar that there's even a saying Tatar and Bashkir are two wings of the same bird. It's easier to say what makes them different other than point out similarities. For example, here is a table pointing out some of the differences between the two closely related languages. Of course, there are way more, however, the overall course of these differences remains the same as shown. The Cyrillic alphabet is used, which is, as I already mentioned, is official. Other differences include different letters of the alphabet, some phonetical distinctions, and also a significant grammatical divergence which allows for considering them different languages rather than two dialects of a single one. According to the Swadesh list system, of 85 basic lexical entities, over 66% will be identical and 34% will demonstrate differences. Now this one is very different. Despite all the languages of the Turkic language family being extremely similar, Chuvash is a notable exception. Being geographically close to the Tatar and Bashkir languages, it does not belong to the Kipchak branch of the Turkic language family. It is the only surviving member of the Agur branch. It was the first one to diverge from the rest of the family. Therefore, it is impossible for the speakers of all the other Turkic languages to understand Chuvash and vice versa. Thus, it is unique. Another interesting feature of this language, aside from its standalone present, is its past. Rumors say that Chuvash is the descendant of the long-dead Bulgar language, which was a language spoken in Volga, Bulgaria. It was a state that existed between the 7th and 13th centuries in the confluence of the Volga and Kama rivers. 
Later, it became part of the Mongol Empire and then the Kazan Khanate, until conquered by Russians in the late 16th century. Chuvash is spoken by a little bit over a million of people, most of whom live in the Republic of Chuvashia. Also, some speakers reside in neighboring Ulyanovsk, Penza and Samara oblasts. The writing system is the Cyrillic alphabet, developed by Christian missionaries in the late 19th century and later heavily modified in 1938. The Chuvash people, unlike Tatars and Bashkirs, who are predominantly Muslim, are either pagan or Christian. That is why the vocabulary features not as many loan words from Arabic or Persian. Chuvash is divided into two main dialectal groups, the Viral or Upper and the Antari or the Lower. Like all the other Turkic languages, Chuvash is an agglutinative language. It features an abundance of suffixes with no native prefixes or prepositions. It also features a complex grammatical case system common for the family. This is it for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. Have a nice day, and see you later!